In this Easy Aid video lecture, we will learn about the single phase transformers, the construction and working principle, different transformer losses, performance of transformer under no load and on load conditions, and the ratings of the transformer. Let's assume that we need to transfer some amount of water from tank A to tank B. So we simply connect the two tanks with a pipe which will transform the water from one tank to another. This was very simple. But how can we transfer the electrical energy from one circuit to another? For this, we use a special device known as a transformer that will transform the electrical signal from one circuit to another. Thus a transformer acts as an AC to an AC converter. Now these transformers vary in size and shape according to the circuit requirements. Let's study the construction of a transformer. There are two main components of the transformer, the core and the coil. The core is a material generally made up of soft steel on which the coils are wounded. It is rectangular in shape with multiple steel sheets connected together. Every sheet is laminated and is isolated from each other by a thin layer of varnish. There are two windings wounded on the core of the transformer as shown. Both the windings are well isolated from each other as well as from the core. Every transformer has two terminals. The terminal at which the input is applied is called as the primary terminal and the terminal across which the output is measured is called as the secondary terminal. Thus 240 volts by 440 volts voltage rating of the transformer signifies that the primary voltage is 240 volts and the secondary voltage is 440 volts. The general symbol of the transformer is as shown. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Depending upon the number of coils on the primary and the secondary side, the transformers are classified into two types as the step down transformer and the step up transformer. If the number of coils at primary is greater than the number of coils at the secondary, then the transformer is called as a step down transformer. This transformer reduces the signal to a lower level before transferring it to a next circuit. Thus 440 volts by 220 volts transformer transforms 440 volts input signal into 220 volts output. If the number of coils at primary is less than the number of coils at the secondary, then the transformer is called as a step up transformer. This transformer increases the signal to a higher level before transferring it to the next circuit. Thus 220 volts by 440 volts transformer transforms 220 volts input signal into 440 volts output. When an electric current flows through a conductor, it generates the magnetic field around that conductor. These lines of force of a magnetic field are called as flux. Thus when the current passes through the primary core, it generates the flux in the coil. As per Faraday's law, this flux induces the voltage known as the electromotive force or EMF in the primary winding, which is given by the equation E1 equals minus N1 into D5 by DT where E1 equals self-induced EMF and N1 equals number of coils at primary winding. As the primary and the secondary coils are linked with each other, the EMF gets induced in the secondary coil also and is given as E2 equals minus N2 into D5 by DT. This E2 is called as a mutually induced EMF. Dividing the two equations, we get E2 by E1 equals N2 by N1. This ratio is called as a transformer ratio and is given by K. This explains the working principle of the transformer. Ideally, there should not be any loss in the transformer. But in practical transformers, we come across few losses such as the copper loss and the iron loss. The iron loss is further divided into an hysteresis loss and an eddy current loss. So let's first study the copper loss. The windings of the transformer being non-ideal have some resistance. The loss that takes place due to the resistance is called as copper loss. The copper loss at primary side is given as I1 square into R1 and the copper loss at secondary side is given as I2 square into R2. The total copper loss is the addition of the two. 
the losses that take place in the core are called as core losses or the iron losses as the core is made up of iron. These losses are of two types. Hysteresis losses given by equation WH equals neta into B max raised to 1.6 into F into V where WH equals hysteresis loss in watts. B max equals maximum value of flux density in Tesla. F equals frequency in Hertz. Neta equals Steinmetz constant and V equals volume of the material in meter cube. And the eddy current losses which occur due to eddy currents are given as WE equals K into B max square into F square into T where K equals transformer ratio, B max equals maximum flux density, F equals frequency in Hertz and T equals thickness of the lamination. The different parameters of the transformer which we will discuss are the winding resistance the leakage reactants and the impedance. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. The non-ideal transformer has primary winding resistance R1 and secondary has resistance R2. Considering both the resistances on one winding makes the calculation very simple and easy. Hence this primary resistance is shifted to the secondary by multiplying it by K square. Similarly, the secondary winding resistance can be shifted to primary by dividing it by K square. The copper loss hence becomes equal to I1 square into R01 on the primary side and I2 square into R02 on the secondary side. The next term is the leakage reactance. When the current flows through the core, it generates the flux which links the primary coil and the secondary coil as it flows through the core. But practically, some part of the flux flows only through one winding which is called as the leakage flux. Thus out of the total flux phi that links the two coils, some flux phi L1 flows through the primary coil only and flux phi L2 flows through the secondary coil only. These leakage fluxes being in phase with the currents I1 and I2 induce the voltages as EL1 and EL2 respectively. The impedances show as X1 next to a primary and secondary leakage reactants respectively. Considering both the resistance and the reactance of the winding, the impedances of the primary and the secondary windings are given as Z01 equals square root of R01 square plus X01 square and Z02 equals square root of R02 square and X02 square. When the secondary terminal of the transformer are kept open, it operates in a no load condition. During this condition, the current through the secondary coil is zero and the iron loss and the copper loss occur due to the primary current only. Thus we get the two components of the primary current I0 as the iron loss component IW and the copper loss component I mu in the phasor diagram shown. And the total primary current equals I0 equal to IW plus I mu. When we connect the load at the secondary terminal, the current I2 starts to flow and generates the flux phi 2 which flows opposite to flux phi. This flux phi 2 weakens the primary flux phi making voltage V1 greater than E1. Thus additional current I2 dash flows generating the flux phi 2 dash in the same direction of the main flux. Now this I2 dash being an equal magnitude and opposite direction cancels secondary current I2. Hence the net effect of the load gets neutralized and the flux passing through the core remains same as that in the no load condition. This load can be of three types as resistive, inductive and capacitive. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Let's draw the phasor diagram of the resistive load. Take flux phi as a reference phasor. Draw E1 bar that lags behind phi by angle 90 degrees. Draw V1 bar equal and opposite to E1 bar. As K equals 1, E2 equals E1. Thus draw E2 bar in phase with E1 bar. Also V2 equals E2. Current I2 is also in phase with V2. And it generates the current I2 dash equal in magnitude but in opposite direction. Draw phase I0 that lags behind V1 by an angle less than 90 degrees. By the law of parallelogram, we find the resultant of I2 dash and I0 as the current I1.
Mark the primary phase angle between I1 and V1 as phi1. This completes the phasor diagram. Now when the load is inductive, the current I2 lags behind the voltage V2 by an angle less than 90 degrees and the procedure for drawing the phasor diagram remains the same. For the capacitive circuit, the current I2 leads the voltage by V2 by an angle less than 90 degrees as shown in the phasor. We always decide the performance of the product based on the rating it receives. In the same way, there are two types of ratings used for transformer as voltage rating and KVA rating. Voltage rating indicates the rated primary and secondary voltages. For example, the voltage rating of 110 by 240 volts determines the primary voltage is 110 volts and the secondary voltage is 240 volts. Thus, voltage rating is mainly used to determine the primary and secondary voltages for the given transformer. Let's see the KVA rating now. In practical transformer, iron losses and copper losses occur because of the voltage and currents. Thus, we represent the power of the transformer in terms of KVA and not as kilowatts. This KVA rating is given by the formula KVA equals E1 into I1 under full load condition upon 1000 equals E2 into I2 under full load condition upon 1000. Let's take an example now. 50 kVA 3000 volts by 150 volts 50 hertz transformer has a high voltage winding resistance of 0 0.25 ohms and a leakage reactance of 0 0.55 ohms. The low voltage winding resistance is 0 0.030 ohms and the leakage reactance is 0 0.022 ohms. Calculate for the transformer equivalent resistance of primary and secondary windings, equivalent reactance of primary and secondary windings, equivalent impedance of primary and secondary windings, copper loss at full load and copper loss at half load. We have E1 equals 3000 volts, E2 equals 150 volts, R1 equals 0 0.25 ohms, X1 equals 0 0.55 ohms, R2 equals 0 0.030 ohms and X2 equals 0 0.022 ohms and KV equals 50. And we have to find out five different terms as shown. For this we use different formulas as shown. So first we find the transformer ratio K as K equals E2 upon E1 equals 0 0.05. The equivalent resistance of the primary side is given as R01 equals R1 plus R2 dash and gives the value R01 equals 12.25 ohms. The equivalent resistance of the secondary side is given as R02 equals R2 plus R1 dash and gives the value 0 0.030 ohms. The next term is equivalent reactance of the primary side and is found in the similar way giving the value X01 equals 9.35 ohm. Similarly, the reactance of the secondary side comes out to be 0 0.0233 ohms. Once the resistances and reactances are known, we can easily determine the impedances of the primary and secondary side. Putting the values, we get Z01 equals 15.41 ohms and Z02 equals 0 0.0379 ohms. Now to find out the copper loss at full load condition, we first need to find the currents I1 and I2 under full load condition which comes out to be I1 equals 16.66 amperes and I2 equals 333.33 amperes. Substituting these values in the equation of copper loss, we get the full load copper loss as 3.4 kilowatts. Similarly, we find the copper loss under half load condition using same formula which gives us the value as 850.01 volts. Let us have a quick review of what we've learned in this lecture. The transformer is a device that transforms the electrical signal from one circuit to another. It consists of the core and the coils and the two ends are called as primary and secondary side respectively. Depending on the number of turns the coil have, the transformers are classified into two main types as step down transformer and step up transformer. When the current flows through the core, it generates the flux which links the primary and secondary sides and develops the EMF across them.
This is how a transformer transforms a signal from the primary to the secondary. But during the process, few losses occur across its copper loss and iron loss. Iron losses are of two types, hysteresis losses and eddy current losses. The transformer's performance is determined with the help of two types of ratings, voltage rating and KVA rating.